Hey everyone, I'm Drew Brockbank, a senior consultant here at Sonata, and today we are going to be reviewing and going over Zoho Flow 101. All right, so you can see here I'm in Zoho 1. Let's go over to the Zoho Flow icon here. Guys, if you're not seeing Zoho Flow in your Zoho 1 sidebar, just go to more applications and search for flow and you can add that to your instance and then add it to your user. If you're not able to add it to yourself, you're probably not a Zoho One admin. So request that from your admin and let's get started. So clicking on flow here, you're gonna see that I am taken to the flow page. Um, I'm gonna back out of here so I can show you the navigation from where you're going to start, which is right here. You're gonna see all the various flows that I have in my account. And this is obviously a demo account. Um, but if we want to create a flow, this is where we can really dive in and see the workings of how to create a flow and what it can do for you. So essentially flow is a way to create integrations and automations. Um, I'm going to just do a demo YouTube flow here and you can see we're presented with three options. You've got app, schedule, and webhook. So for application, essentially what we're looking at here is Various, um, we're, we're looking at a tool that is very similar to Zapier, but if you're already paying for Zoho, why not take advantage of Zoho and their ecosystem instead of paying per Zap with Zapier? So applications, there are many different third-party applications that Zoho has already set up an easy way for you to authenticate. If you're not familiar, uh, familiar with web development, oftentimes with third-party tools, you will need to use something like Postman to um, authenticate with another application. That way you can begin adding webhooks and setting up triggers. So if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Essentially what you need to understand here is there are other applications such as Xero, QuickBooks, Basecamp, project management tools, um, tons of different tools and third-party applications that can integrate right with Zoho. We'll go over those in just a moment. And then you've got schedule. So schedule here is exactly what it sounds like on a routine basis. You can set up a trigger once every hour, once every day, week, month, whatever you'd like to perform some kind of automation. We're talking triggers here, right? If then these are the ifs. So then you come down to webhooks and webhooks is um, you needing to do more of the heavy lifting on the development end. So what do I mean by that? Essentially, you'll need to go um, and interact with the API of certain applications and you will need to add webhooks or triggers. Um, we'll save kind of how to actually go through that maybe in another video. Drop a comment down below if you'd like us to show you how to do that with webhooks and interacting with other applications so that you can add a target URL to another webhook and set up that um, automation slash integration there. So um, with that guys, let's jump into application, view the various triggers that exist there and the various applications that Zoho um, can interact with out of the box. And then we'll move into schedule and then I'll kind of show you, I'm gonna walk you through the Zoho Flow Builder and how you can actually build out that automation. So with that, let's hop into two application here and you can see these are all the third party applications that Zoho Flow is working with. And we can see a ton of betas here. So uh, great stuff. I highly recommend every time you're looking to do another integration or um, work with another third party application that needs to talk to Zoho, that you go through here, you go to Zoho Flow, you look at the different app triggers and you see if you can start working with this out of the box as opposed to throwing it development and having them work with the API. This just makes life so much easier for you. So I'm gonna back out of here. We're gonna look at schedule. You can see here we're choosing frequency, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, once. Um, I lied, you cannot do it every hour. It's on a daily basis. There are ways around that if you would like to use um, Zoho CRM as a way to trigger automations. But with that, we're gonna back out of here. I'm gonna go to Webhook and you are going to see it give, um, Zoho is now giving us a Webhook URL that we can copy. And if we are working with another application, um, or if you're working with the development team of, of another application, you can send this over to them and say, hey, look, here's the target URL for the webhook. 
make sure that we have X, Y, and Z data passing back over on a certain trigger, such as record created, call created, whatever, whatever system you're working with, and um, you can get started there. So for the sake of this demo, we are going to focus on application today. And if you would like to go um, over schedule and webhook, um, feel free to do that on your own time. And again, if you'd like the webhook video, just drop in the comments below and we will get that, get working on that for you. So jumping to applications now, I'm gonna just click next and let's just go through something um, that most people look to do when they are not using Zoho Books, which is they're using QuickBooks. And all the time we set up this flow because essentially what we need to do when we do a QuickBooks integration is you work proactively and retroactively. Retroactively, you migrate all the data from QuickBooks over to Zoho CRM and you include the QuickBooks customer ID. But proactively, what you need to do is add this trigger so that as you add customers on the QuickBooks end, that's being passed over to Zoho CRM. So with that, we'll go to customer created. We'll click on next. You'll see here, um, we can just create that without doing the authentication, which is great. You can see this connection has been created. Here's the variable name. It just took all the pain away from us doing this from scratch and having to ping our, uh, the QuickBooks API with an auth token, we can just get started from here, which is just phenomenal. So I'm gonna close out of here and you can see now we are inside of the Zoho Flow Builder. You can see here on the left-hand side, these are all the third-party applications, again, that you can integrate with and their various triggers. So if I go into Zoho CRM as an example here, you can see, and what I recommend you do is you type the application name in here and I'm just going to click down here. You can see it's running just a tad bit slow and I can now use command F or if you're on a Mac that is, or command F if you're on a Mac, control F if you are on a PC here. And if I just type in created, you can see on the, or create, you can see um, I can highlight what I'm looking for as far as triggers are concerned or as far as actions are concerned. So, and, and with that, uh, just mistake. So these aren't triggers, sorry, these are actions. Uh, you start the function um, or the flow with a trigger and then on the left-hand side here are your actions. So you can create a module entry, create an update contact, create an update lead, do so many things within Zoho. Um, right here, what we'd want to do, right, is we'd want to create a module entry or we could do create an update contact that works as well. So I'm actually gonna pull this right into the system and you can see as soon as I drag and drop, it's been connected. There's the connection. And we can start, uh, if, if I come over to this um, panel right here, I can actually click on this icon right here. And what that allows me to do is see all the information that's coming over from QuickBooks. So then I can click into first name here and I'm just gonna search for first name or name. You can see there's name popping up here on the right hand side again within the QuickBooks information. So company name, display name, family name. Um, I'm gonna take it that it's family name and, or display name here. So I'm gonna go click here, click on, whoops. We're gonna click on display name here and we'll put display name in last name and full name. Guys, what you can do on the um, other end is oftentimes systems are not going to give you first name, last name. Um, they're going to give you like display name, which is first name, last name, concatenated, family name, fully qualified name, all these different things. So what you can do is you can go ahead and test within QuickBooks. You can go ahead and create, after you set up the flow, you can create different records there to ping flow and test those things out. And I recommend that you do that just so you can see what's actually being passed over um, from these variables that we're seeing in QuickBooks. Now jumping back in the system, um, we are going to just get the company name here. And again, just go back to the full name, last name, first name. Um, those are obviously the fields within the Zoho CRM contact. What you're gonna wanna do here is, um, we're not going to show you in this video, but you'd want to write a function, right? And we'd say, okay, when full, when um, a contact is created, 
we are going to parse the prefix and suffix of the space within the name. And we're going to take the prefix, make that the first name, suffix, make it the last name. So that would be a part of this as well. And that's something we do quite a bit. So if you need help, just let us know and we can give you a hand there. QuickBooks ID, we would certainly want that. So we're going to just click ID here and customer ID is what we're looking for, guys. So we're just going to go here, select ID. And as you can see, you just want to go through the rest of the fields here and pass along all the information you need and click done. So from there, you can activate your flow, switch it on. This is now activated and I'm going to show you a couple of other things here. So we, you, as you can see, we are in the builder of demo YouTube. And what we want to do now is hop over to history. And if we were to have had pinged the system for some tests, we would be able to jump in and view some payloads or information sent from another system. Let's just hop out of here and we will hop over to Calendly and Acuity. Let's just go ahead and swap this over to year to date. Um, if we can do all time, see if there's any history here. What's important to know here is that you can hop into the history and you can actually rerun failed flow. So obviously we are not seeing anything here because we have no task history, but if you were to, you would see icons or you would see rows here indicating that there have been successful um, things to the Zoho flow or successful triggers sending information to the Zoho flow. And if it failed somewhere throughout the system. So now we're going to hop over here to summary. And in the summary, you're getting a couple things here. So we're seeing the various applications, right? That are being integrated. You're going to see the Zoho flow name. You can change that here, the description and the execution. Basically, this is um, a, a, a two charts just showing you the um, the different amount of triggers that have happened within a flow over a period of time, either failed or successful. You're going to see here recent executions of the flow and then different connections that are associated minimizes um, different connections that are associated with the Zoho flow. Um, now, one other important thing to go over here are obviously some pre-built actions that you can do within all these various applications, right? But what you can do as well is you can go in and you can write your own custom function. For some of you, this is going to seem very scary, um, but essentially it's just super helpful. Just a UI tip. So when you click edit here, you were asked, you were actually passing over the initial parameters for the function. And we're not going to dive too deeply into this, but if you actually want to edit the function itself, you come over here, the left hand sidebar, and then you click on the pencil edit icon. And then from there, and let me, yeah. And then, and then from there, you're going to actually edit the function. So there are some, um, there's a built-in function reference for you that you can jump over to, and it's going to show you all the deluge. Um, built-in functions that can help you manipulate the data the way that you'd like. And then obviously you have some um, drag and drop blocks of code that you can throw. And again, this is in Deluge. It's Soho's proprietary coding language, similar to um, JavaScript. If you're familiar, it will be very easy to pick up. Okay, guys, that is Zoho Flow in a nutshell. If you have questions, please leave um, comments below asking, we'll get back to you. And if you like this kind of content, do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next time.